motion. Mayweather is no doubt about it. In my mind, in, May in Mosley's mind, in anybody's mind now, that he is the best. He keeps on proving it over and over and over again. And tonight, tonight convinced me, I have to say the truth, convinced me that he is the best. Um, possibly, possibly, there, there's obviously a lot of people who will say and who can uh, argue this, but of all time. When you have any kind of downtime, I see you have Floyd on YouTube. What are you taking from watching his fights? Just little stuff, just like how he's moving, like his, his hand placement, like what he's throwing at and things like that. Like um, just how he, he is in like the boxing, in the boxing ring, just... I like to try to watch him a lot because I, I not really fight like him, but I try to like, he's he's off the dot, so if I can do it on the southpaw mm -hmm. side, then it's going to be a little awkward for my opponent. So mm -hmm. I always like to watch Floyd, you know what I mean? Because he's, he's the best that, well, and that I think that he's the best, mm -hmm. like the greatest of all time, for mm -hmm. sure. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Let me tell you guys something. There's almost no bigger compliment than a person who doesn't even really like you that much personally, but yet still acknowledges your greatness, still calls you the greatest of all time in the same sport that you're in. And that's what we just seen in both of those clips that I played for you guys. The clip with Oscar De La Hoya and the clip with Javante Tang Davis. When it comes to Oscar De La Hoya, here you have one of Floyd Mayweather's arch rivals calling him the greatest of all time. And Oscar De La Hoya, he said this on many different occasions. That clip I played for you, that was right after Floyd Mayweather beat Shane Mosley. Oscar has also recently said it. And remember, Oscar is always dissing Floyd Mayweather personally, but he never allows that to interfere with what he has to say when he's talking about how great Floyd Mayweather is. Knowing all of the things that Javante has said about Floyd Mayweather, all the memes that he's made, knowing how personal the beef has been with Javante and Floyd Mayweather, this goes beyond just praising how great Floyd Mayweather is. It reveals the racial narrative that exists in the sport of boxing, the racial politics, if you will, and how powerful the racial narrative is. You guys may recall, it wasn't that long ago that Javante was constantly praising Canelo, saying he's my favorite fighter, saying that he wants to be the Canelo of his division, as if Canelo is like the Michael Jordan of the sport. Meanwhile, when Javante Tank Davis is preparing for a fight, when he's about to walk out and fight, he's watching clips of Floyd Mayweather. He's watching videos of Floyd Mayweather. He's not watching highlights of Canelo Alvarez. He's not trying to learn anything from Canelo. And I pointed this out long time ago when Javante, I believe he was about to fight, was it Hector Garcia? Either Hector Garcia or Roly Romero, probably Roly Romero. And right before the fight, he was in his dressing room watching Floyd Mayweather versus Artil Gatti. I told you guys, this tells you the whole story. I asked you guys this on many occasions. If he's saying that Canelo Alvarez is this and he's that, why isn't he watching clips of Canelo? Because Javante deep down has always known that Floyd Mayweather is the Michael Jordan of the sport. He's never looked at Canelo as anything special, but Javante felt the same way a lot of these black fighters feel. Deep down, we all know that Floyd Mayweather is the greatest, but these racist fans don't want to hear that. And when you're in a sport that's based on race, nationality, and pride, then guess what? Saying something positive about a fighter that's not black regardless if it's true or the furthest thing from the truth is going to be the popular narrative. This is the reason why Shakur Stevenson is extremely comfortable to say that Tyson Fury would have beat Muhammad Ali. But then when he's asked about Jared Anderson versus Tyson Fury, he says, oh, well, there's no reason to talk about that fight because it's never going to happen. Just like Muhammad Ali versus Tyson Fury was never going to happen. But yet he was still extremely comfortable to compare Tyson Fury to Muhammad Ali and then say, I can't see any of the greatest heavyweights 
beating Tyson Fury. And see, this really has nothing to do with who would have really won that fight in a fantasy match. It has nothing to do with that. Shakur understood that regardless if it was true or not, even if the race fans didn't agree with his assessment on Tyson Fury, they were still going to love the fact that he said this. And that's the exact way it played out because ESPN, they made separate videos of Shakur Stevenson just praising Tyson Fury. Do you guys think that Shakur would have got the same reception if he were to say Lennox Lewis would have beat Tyson Fury? Of course not. There would not be a separate video that ESPN would have put on their YouTube channel if Shakur Stevenson said that. And once again, fighters like Shakur, Javante Tank Davis, and many others, they understand this. But this is what these type of black fighters don't understand. These races only have power because you give them power by catering to whatever narrative it is that they create. A microphone and a camera is the most dangerous weapon in the world. It can be used for you or against you. And it doesn't always have to be a microphone. It could just be you tweeting something because you already have a huge name. You already have a platform. If you put the message out there, it's going to spread, it's gonna resonate. You notice when it comes to these racists, when it comes to Teddy Atlas, Max Kellerman, and the rest of old media, they're extremely comfortable with their propaganda. When they put that narrative out there, they are fearless. And that is the exact way these black fighters have to be when it comes to speaking the truth. You have to be fearless. And once you stand up for yourself, other black people, black fighters, and even other anti-racists will start to do the same. You don't even have to be black, you just have to be an anti-racist. Because just telling people you're not a racist because your favorite fighter is Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali, it means absolutely nothing. You have to be anti-racist. And most importantly, you have to be bold. You have to be just as bold as you are when you're in that ring and someone is trying to take your head off. But I am starting to notice a little bit of a shift. There are a couple black fighters that are starting to stand up to the bully. Fighters like Clarissa Shields, Stephen Fulton, I'm starting to notice more of a consistent pattern of them starting to say things, starting to tweet things that a lot of black fighters would not be comfortable tweeting or addressing. Now we all know when a black fighter gets dissed by another black fighter, he responds immediately. I mean, five minutes won't even go by. And that black fighter is already dissing the other black fighter on Twitter, on Instagram, whatever, right? But when Teddy Atlas comes out and he disses all black fighters, right? Or Eddie Hearn comes out and he's dissing black fighters. I mean, it's complete silence on Twitter. If Teddy Atlas is not afraid to say what's on his mind, if Pauli Malignaggi is not afraid, if Max Kellerman, if Chris Mannix, Mike Coppinger, and the rest of the gang is comfortable telling you how they feel about black fighters, then you should be comfortable with speaking the whole truth. And speaking the truth, it just means you expose the double standards. You ask rhetorical questions. Like how is it possible Teddy Atlas, he says that Shakur Stevenson is boring, regardless if he gets a stoppage or he doesn't get the stoppage. Regardless if he knocks down his opponents multiple times or he gets no knockdowns. How is it possible he says that Shakur Stevenson is boring and not entertaining, but yet he's never praised Javante Tang Davis or Deontay Wilder for being entertaining, for being exciting, for getting vicious knockouts. These are the type of double standards that people should be pointing out. If you do this enough, these races will go silent because it's already happened in the past before when they have been exposed. With that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. One of the most anticipated dog breedings has finally been confirmed. The pups from this pairing of Zeta and DMX will be born very soon. We are now accepting deposits. Our pups will come with ears cropped and a two-year health guarantee. Get ahead of the pack on purchasing a puppy by contacting NWA Connie Corsos on Instagram at NWA Connie Corsos. Call or text 479-326-1603 with any questions. A guard dog is your first line of defense. These will be the right pups for the job. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, 
burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers. And this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swell and inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs or defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.